Welcome back to Unfiltered Discussions. So we were able to get to know three professional females who happen to be a elementary school teacher who we have as Desi Saldana, a re community relations officer, Michelle Ruiz, and Blessing Guillermo, who is a Washington State contract specialist. We were able to get into their new working conditions and how they're able to cope with it and all the positives that they were able to draw out of this current situation. But with every positive, with everything in life, right, there is a flip side to the coin. We are going to talk about the realities, more of the reality and more of the cons, like the challenges, the struggles. And before we get into that, though, there is a question that was posed to a psychologist. And this psychologist is the um, goes by the name as Marty Nemko, is, who is a career and personal coach based in Oakland, California, and an author of 10 books. So a question that one of his, his viewers had asked him is this, Dear Dr. Marty, our marriage is not made in heaven, but we've managed to make it work here on earth. But the coronavirus shelter-in-place edict has us spending much more time together and we're having a hard time. Or is this a thought that had come to your mind one or multiple times throughout this process? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was like a delay with your yes, Michelle. It's okay. I know you wanted to yell it out, but that's okay. <laughs> so, you know, myself included, you know, new situations always comes challenges because it's unfamiliar. And when we come face to face with new discoveries and things that we don't, mm -hmm. don't like or are used to, it's going to catch us off guard, right? So mm -hmm. what are some of those challenges? What are those cons? And I, ladies, we want some detail. We understand you love your spouse. We understand you value your vow, right? And your spouses love you too. And they love you unconditionally, right? Unconditionally. So, and you know, I just want you ladies to know also that our viewers are in the same situation as us. So, you know, just feel relaxed and <laughs> know that you'll still be married after this show. <laughs> But um, we're going to go ahead and kick off this discussion with Desi. So before I answer that question, okay. um, I would like to address my loving husband. Um, <laughs> get out of the room for now. Come back when you're in the nicest part. And I'm, I'm actually complimenting you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now let me let me get back to this. Um, there's a lot of time. Um, our loved ones know that I am the fire and he's ice he's very calm i'm the crazy one <laughs> i am used to going to work with 20 some odd children and i work well with chaos mm -hmm. that is that is me mm -hmm. so now that i am in this time with my husband i am still looking for that chaos so i'm the one that starts an argument just so that something is happening. You cannot have an argument if person two doesn't argue back. <laughs> and, then that just, and that just frustrates me more, right? Yeah. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to make something happen because now we have this time. Granted, and I don't know how many people will agree to this, but the moment that you ha you are in a relationship with someone, the greatest conversation you will ever have with the small amount of time that you will ever have is, what would you like to eat? <laughs> that is the <laughs> most conversation we've had. I mean, reality for us. And then after that, it's okay, let's go eat. Let's smile at each other. Let's go to bed. Right? That's it. But now that we have this time, it's like, what do we do? right what do we do and i'm learning about his quirks i am learning how i think it's just that pent up um he has his, this hobby he he likes to be very um he's very methodical 
he's um he's very detailed in a lot of things. Uh given an example, he's starting to do his man cave. Um that's not what he calls it. He calls it his his studio and he just needs his approval for every little thing that goes in that room. And in my mind, I'm telling myself I love him. I love him. I love him. I don't care. <laughs> right? But I love him. Like, please, please don't let me see another more video from YouTube about the reviews and the ratings of a certain light or a certain desk table that you're going to put in that room. I go crazy. Hence, you see this box behind me. This is my, ex my escape room. This is, this, is, this is my space. We get into each other's business a lot. I'm, I'm more of the person where something needs to get done. It needs to get done right away. And, and I, I've rediscovered that he's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at me right now. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, we, have, we have our own way of um, doing things. Um, I am very, I'm, I'm very planned out. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this and I, I want everything done. The moment you say something, I need it done. Mm -hmm. And he's, let's take our time. Let's revisit. I'm like, no, we're not going to revisit. This needs to be done now, you know? So, and, and that's where we drive each other crazy for that because he, he will point that out. And again, I am the argumentative one. I will argue back. I will argue to no end. Um, and I think that's where we're butting heads a lot because I'm <laughs> stubborn. I am very stubborn. He's very patient. Which gets my nerves a lot of times <laughs> because I'm like, why can't you argue back? <laughs> so, and I, I and I have to tell myself I'm I'm an educator. I have to have more patience, but then yet again, it's like I'm the wife. I get to be the kid of the house. We don't have our own. Wife. I am the kid. I am the child. So, yeah. That's me. <laughs> That's us right now within this whole scheme of pandemic. I'm the pandemic here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Just, it sounds like wait. the the biggest challenge is yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's and, hard being it's hard being cooped up with with, with you know, with someone who's just, who's so calm and who's so collected. Yeah, so passive, and with, yeah. And a lot of, a lot of um, women out there are, I mean, for me, like, I'm very thankful my husband's like that, yeah. but it drives me nuts. <laughs> because I'm like, man, the next day, this is how it's going to be again. <laughs> I got to think of some way to spice things up. <laughs> This is not working out. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. You know, That's hilarious. knowing that you are the pandemic in your household <laughs> and nothing seems to like make Sandy flinch at anything because he, oh. he is a very patient man. We've met yeah. him before and we, we work very closely with him as well. So what, what, what kind of, what positive though were you able to extract from the budding of heads because of your opposite personalities? He gives in. I was able to reevaluate re myself, not just a wife, as a wife, mm -hmm. um, not just as a you know as a woman, but as just a person. You know why? You know how they say that your soulmate is your better half. Your whatever whatever traits that you don't have, your other half has it. So that's why it makes you complete as a person. You're no longer two, but one. And I think that's what I have realized with us being cooped up together. That his weakness is my strength and my weakness is his strength. Again, we don't have kids of our own. And that was one of the discussions that, if, you know, this, this unfiltered anyway, that that was one of the discussions that we never had a time to, to talk about because we just, we just didn't have that opportunity. And if this is how, if this is why 
this is happening it's giving us this time to discuss our future yeah um and that's the the you know the pro that i'm i'm getting out of this because now we can actually look at our you know discuss us mm-hmm. instead of him hey how are you doing your work hey how are you you know how's how's the children it's now how are we together mm-hmm. how are we together as as husband and wife how are we together in terms of the promises and the vows that we made to each other mm-hmm. you know, we've, i've been married for 11 11 12 years and it just seems like we're still in this train of like a very long honeymoon because we we don't have kids you know and and i, I get that from you know from michelle and and, and blessing that i can't relate to that to to not having your own children even though i am a teacher mm-hmm. you know and so we have revisited that as husband and wife um i love him more than before i think i love him more than before because now i i i was able to reevaluate re- myself and why i why god chose me to be with him and him with me you know because i am the crazy one <laughs> i need someone who's calm to so that i don't drive myself crazy <laughs> so yeah yeah <clears throat> you know i love you is <laughs> <laughs> Did he just say all those things? I'm sure he's lurking somewhere around the corner. <laughs> lurking. That was absolutely beautiful. You know, yes. and yes. what what seems to to me, you know, um just this time, right, to really talk and to discover yourself. That's like mm-hmm. key. That is key to everything. Yes. Like we need to know about ourselves for us to fully understand others. and to bring it back around to the whole balance in life. Let's go ahead and turn to Michelle. You know, what are what are some of your challenges? I know your husband's not there right now, so you can you you say. <laughs> <laughs> um for me my challenge is basically, you know, I mean, communication again. Um we communicated really through like text messaging mostly you know and now that we've been face to face with each other you know we've been talking a lot more and i know a lot of times i've been so used to text messaging and not seeing his face every time i get irritated by him you know uh, but this time around it's like okay i see him now you know can't sugarcoat anything you know with my emojis or anything right so <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know i mean it made me realize too like what um on december said you know your future because i'm like this is going to be the guy that i'm going to be with when i grow old you know and you know we hear about empty nest right and for me having my kids and everything we just don't know you know how it's going to be like when it's just the two of us again so that's why this trial error with this uh pandemic it's really kind of you know re um edifying us and just making sure that you know we're really meant for each other and differences i mean we are definitely opposites you know i think between our relationship i'm the patient one you know and he is you know He's one of those that wants to get things done right away and everything like that. I'm the t- type of person that's like, "Don't worry, we got this. You know, we have time, you know, and everything like that." But no, he just likes to get things done, which, you know, I appreciate. You know, it kind of gives keeps me in check on where I stand, you know, when it comes to like, you know, projects that we have doing. And speaking of that, honey do list. That's been one thing that's been a blessing <laughs> with all of this too, right? I mean, is it, is it a honey do list for you or you're a honey do list for him? As a family, right? Oh. You know, because we're thinking about safety, right? Safety in the household. So, yeah. So <laughs> So that's one thing too why I appreciate you know what's going on too because we're actually you know getting things done together you know and it's just been really nice to just kind of like you know appreciate each other on you know our differences you know and instead of me getting mad or upset or you know he turns around and says come on just talk to me just let me know what's on your mind you know so he forces it out of me instead uh-huh. of me just texting it on the phone so It's been nice, you know, and wow. yeah, for me it's like um yeah, they do get irritating at times, but 
I mean, this is who I married, you know, and this is a <laughs> lifetime commitment, you know, you got to take it or leave it or else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and another thing too, right? You got to set the example for your kids too, because if you you set that example for them that you guys are always fighting all the time and not being together or thinking the same way in decisions, the kids will pick up on that. You know, they're they're smart kids. You know, so I know that's that's my experience with what's going on with um everything that's uh, happening between the two of us. Awesome. But there is always a reason why, why, why people are joined together, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And True. it's amazing how the yin and the yang, whatever our beliefs uh -huh. are, but it's crazy that opposites attract. Yes. yes. And we learn For sure. from our spouses. But have a blessing. I mean, blessing has <laughs> been married way longer than we've been married to our spouses. So she's seen a plethora of things her kids are grown and out of the house she's spending more time with her hubby rediscovering new things but to discover new things you got to see all the dirt first oh <laughs> wow well um i'm as i listen to the two other ladies i find that i'm a combination of both i want to get things done I'm the one that drives people crazy. And yet I'm also, I, I try to be very patient. And I think, especially in, um, with the COVID crazy going on, we need to give each other grace. Despite wanting to get things done, just like this, he's like, get it done now. Um, and I mentioned some jealousy before is that here is a perfect time. Getting paid while sitting home doing nothing. What a perfect time to get things done. That honeydew list kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> and the jealousy was that I still had to work. I don't have the luxury of time to get those things, these projects that I've been wa wanting to do for years. So I wanted him to get going now. And he's like, I'm on quarantine. I don't have to do anything. So there were some heated discussions <laughs> and I had to realize that, hey, he's, there's got to be, uh, there's got to be a compromise there. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to back off a bit and realize that this was coming from some, some jealousy and I had to realize that it was his time. He's a hard worker, so I had to have faith that he will get things done when he gets them done. So that was the lecture. I had to give much to myself. <laughs> but also, um, sometimes with us being opposites, uh, that had to take some work. There was, there was some discussions that were awkward because I'm like, when? When are you going to get done? And <laughs> how much? Oh, so, uh, so this $1,000 project is now 5000 Do you realize you're not really getting paid, right? <laughs> so it was like... <laughs> So there was a lot of uh, sharpness there that needed to be softened. <laughs> but again, there was still that communication still need to occur. So, um, so we had to remind ourselves that the relationship was the number one thing, not the deck, not all these other things on the honey do list, but the relationship. So there still had to be respect and there still had to be love in the discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so it, 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 it will work out eventually, maybe, hopefully, <laughs> but the important thing is that, um, the relationship got stronger because we could depend on each other and trust each other, not to, not to use our differences against each other. But like you said, to compliment each other. Like I've told my, I, my kids several times that because we're all opposites in our relationships, we're like zippers. Yeah. We should be working, yeah. even though opposites of each other, but working together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a little bit off, mm -hmm. just like zippers. But for the most part, in order for you to get things done, you should be like zippers. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so we had to reconnect where our zippers aligned in a couple of mm -hmm. times. Um, but um, 
yeah, there were some hard discussions that need to occur. <laughs> um, but because we knew that the relationships were the number one thing, it was easy to, not easy. Um, we knew we were going to get there. And this is after 36 years of marriage. Um, that it was, it was going, we were going to be there because we were committed to the long haul. Yes. Um, so, so despite the discussions, despite the jealousy, despite the emotions that go in there, despite the social distancing that we need from our own husbands, um, we make it work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen to that. You know, with, isn't this, isn't this interesting? So the key here I go back to the key. The key for a lot of things is relationship. And knowing that the world has stopped because of this pandemic, it really, it really boils down to how we make use of this time and how, yes. we, how we control our emotions, uh, how we take the whole situation in our minds, how we process it, um, is it going to allow it to affect our relationship with our family? Are we going to allow something that we have no control over, you know, influence the way we think towards our spouse, towards our family? So it's really so important that we do have this time to reconnect and become that functioning zipper. Because mm -hmm. probably a lot of times we probably didn't realize that our zipper was broken. Right, and we just go about the business. We needed all this time to to spend together to realize the dysfunctions and to repair it. Yes. Right? And so now that you, all three of you obviously have come to a new level, to another level, a healthier level in your relationship, how is this helping you have more balance? How is it like now that you have? come to a better understanding with your family, with your spouse? So I think for me, it, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's built a foundation for us because when everything goes normal again, that's a true test, whether or not we're going to be there for each other, you know? So I think right now, discussing things, talking to one another, and just expressing our feelings will help us in the long run when it comes to, you know, going back to reality. And we know for a fact after this pandemic is over, it's not going to be normal again. So we're going to really need each other's help. I know that when this pandemic ends, everyone's going to hit that ground running. Mm -hmm. And the amount of workload that we are all going to be facing is going to multiply. Yes. You know, it's going to be a lot. And yes. like what Michelle said, it, that will be the true test right there. Because now... I have so much time with my husband. We are able to reconnect again. We are able to reestablish that line of communication. And it's not just asking each other, oh, how are you doing? How are you feeling? But it's really having those deep emotional conversation. Those, you know, the, even the ugly parts of, because you have to go through the ugly before you can get to the beautiful, you know? So and that will be, and, and that's the, the promise that we made to each other that after this is all done, what we have rediscovered within this whole, you know, crisis, it will continue. It will, we will try to make it grow even stronger because if we are going to try to establish a family, to have our own kids, to really think about the future, then we really need to start concentrating on us versus going back to how we were before um, where it's him and me, you know? So I'm hoping that it will go through that. So. Blessing? My, okay. I think for me, well, for both of us, uh, I've seen the growth in the both of us in terms of our relationship and being kinder to each other and because now we understand each other a little bit more. And for the most part, 
now there's a lot of trust. I, I mean, we've had trust before, but now there's even a stronger trust that the relationship is important for both of us. So, so we won't be using our differences against each other. I mean, unless of course it's funny. <laughs> if you can make it funny, then then it's okay. But for the most part, I, I, I think what this time, this forced time together made, made me realize with my husband is that of all the practical things that we go through day to day, there's still that person that I fell in love with. And I hope he's discovered, rediscovered the person that he fell in love with too. But more importantly, not just being in love, but loving one another. Thank you so much, ladies. And even though we have our, our careers, right? And in our careers, there's much to juggle. And oftentimes we don't know how to leave our thoughts, our work, our work mindset behind when we're with our family. And it looks like that being forced, I'm gonna use your words, Blessing, being forced to work together is really teaching us how to find a balance. Because now we're able to handle different emotions during different uh, situations. Like you're trying to, you're doing your work, but you also know that you have your family there to take care of. And you're able to tell them and communicate effectively you know, mm -hmm. because when you have that whole level of trust, like a refined trust, I don't think there's anything greater than that. A refined trust and love mm -hmm. is, is essential to effective yes. communication and to balance, no matter if it's with a work mindset or a home mindset, you're able to work them together, just thrive. You know, and so we really appreciate you, Desi, for sharing with us your insights on how your current situation has proliferated you to a better well-being, as well as Michelle and Blessing. This has truly been a wonderful discussion, and we thank you so much for, you know, letting your guard down and just sharing what's in your heart, because you doing so, it really resonated within all of us. Thank you again for joining us. And thank you viewers for tuning in. I'm your host, Frenzel Faheran, and you've been watching Unfiltered Discussions. <laughs>